Next speaker, the next, next topic, I'm, I'm pleased to introduce um, uh, our next speaker to you because I have got to know her over just the last few months. When did you join DCTC? Three months ago. Three months ago. Uh, Natalie Kramer is one of our new enrollment advisors up in student services. She has been a student at St. Cloud State and has done uh, numerous things in her pro young professional life already. Um, what she's going to speak on, because another aspect of when you're talking about student success, there's the, how to manage stress, because we're all experiencing that. But as a DCTC student, as a student in the Minsky system for that matter, you have a number of different electronic portals available to you. We're still amazed how many students don't use them or don't understand them. We're talking about e-services, we're talking about D2L. So Natalie's topic is going to be on virtual success. What you didn't know, you needed to know. You needed to know. Ladies and gentlemen, Natalie Kramer, give her up. Hey guys, so I have a written out introduction that's kind of funny, and Patrick introduced myself, but bear with me, we're going to go through the introduction because that's leading up to my presentation. So my name's Natalie. I'm an enrollment advisor here at Dakota County Technical College. Any idea how I got started? in enrollment advising. I guarantee five-year-old Natalie was not playing as a child going, I'm going to be an enrollment advisor someday. High school Natalie definitely was not looking at what colleges, programs for enrollment advising had the best educational options out there. And college Natalie, well, college Natalie was struggling. If you list off any challenge that you guys have had as a student, I guarantee I have gone through that challenge. I have been in school longer than I wanted to. I ended up with a second degree and a licensure and as an EMT because I didn't follow my daughter's right. I didn't ask questions. What I learned is I'm an incredibly good at figuring out whatever college system you place me in and figuring out the best way to get a person out of there fast and cheap. And I found this out one day as I was helping my friend because she was looking at not being able to graduate because she missed a class, because something happened. And she goes, you should do this for a living. And I started laughing. And I'm like, what? And she's like, this right here. And I'm like, this isn't a job. This is, I'm just helping you out. She's like, seriously, I just sat down with an advisor for the last hour, and you fixed it in five minutes. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can do this. So this is where the concept of everything you didn't know you needed to know comes out. Having gone to school, having been in the um, in the program that I was in, I learned a lot about student development and why schools work the way we do. High school, teacher tells you everything, and then college is this magical shift where now we expect you to come to us with what you want to do. Well, how many of you guys were told, hey, it's college, you're in charge, we'll, we'll be there for you? Or were you just told, show up, get it done, we'll take care of you? Kind of like you still are looking to us for help. Somewhere in there, we're missing that communication with students, that we want you guys to be in control. Every single one of you is capable of being a student, capable of taking care of themselves. And we gave you the tools, we just never told you what the tools were. So starting with e-services in the background, this, or on, on the screens, I mean, you guys have all seen your e-services account. The number one thing that everyone should do the first day is make sure that their address is correct. And if you go into the accounts management section up there, um, address info, address and phone number, Demographic info, for some reason, at the very bottom, after you go through all your demographic info, is your email. I know, makes complete sense. Let's throw your email in with your demographics and not your address and other contact information. But I didn't create it, so that's another story for the day. If you guys don't have those updated, we can't get a hold of you. You're not going to get important information. Also, the one thing I want to highlight is your degree audit report. Anyone here know what a degree audit report is? Registration's coming up in a couple of weeks. How many of you guys have looked at your degree audit report and started thinking about what classes you want to take next semester? How many of you guys are going to go to your faculty and ask, what should I take next semester? Do you know you don't need to do that? I mean, you do have to follow the sequence of the program, but you don't need us telling you what to do. You can look at it and go, hey, I'm a part-time student. I only want to take six credits, and I want to make sure they're at night. Well, you have the power to do that. One of the big issues students have is we look to our faculty for guidance. Well, 
now that I'm on the other side of the equation, I don't know you. I don't necessarily know what your life is like and what's going on. So I'm going to give you the best educated guess on what you should be doing. But how do I know that you can't take night classes if you don't tell me? How do I know your car's busted up right now and you can only come in one day a week unless you tell me? So I might put you in a class that you can't get to. Happens all the time. Don't be afraid to say, hey, this isn't right for me. Hey, I have a problem. You need to think in advance. I knew I had a problem when I was a student, and I never went in. I didn't want to be that person to ask a question and go, hey, I, I don't think this is right, because they were my teachers. They worked there. Clearly, they must know what they're doing. Yes, we do, but when my degree wasn't right, it's not something that they're going to see unless I point it out. Because, hate to break it to you guys, with a couple thousand students and only five advisors, we're not sitting there going through every single one of your DARS every day going, yep, this needs a change, this needs a change. We need you guys to come in and say, hey, I noticed this wasn't right. That's what we want you to do. It's a good thing to do it. it took me four years, we're going to say four years before I got comfortable with that aspect. I, and I'm just going to do public service announcement. Don't be me. Don't wait four years to get comfortable asking a question. Just ask it right away. That's what we're here for. Do you want me to click on the audit report? Yeah, can you, can you pull up the audit report? Can you make it bigger by any chance in the back? I don't. <laughs> so how many of you guys is this your first semester? You started in January. Okay, one thing that you're going to see in your degree audit report that wasn't there before is who your advisor is. I know it's really far in the back and it's kind of hard to see and that's what you all get for sitting so far away. <laughs> you could have sat closer and been able to see the screen, just saying. But now your advisor is going to be listed. This is your faculty advisor. So the difference between me and a faculty advisor, I'm your enrollment advisor. If you have an issue, financial aid, your degree audit report, grades, and not grades, excuse me, degree out report, anything that has to do with your account itself, come to me. I'm great with those questions. If you have a question on where can I find an internship, what's this class like, do you think this is too much of a workload depending on your program, definitely ask your advisor. I guarantee I have not taken a single one of the classes they offer here and cannot give you an accurate description. Whereas the faculty who have been teaching it for years know exactly what their class is going to be like. So that's the difference between faculty and enrollment advisor. New students, everyone here, enrollment or faculty advisor is where you're going. They're the people you want to start contacting this week, next week, and saying, hey, here's my plan. What do you think? Have I beaten the degree out of report to death? Questions, concerns? Um, if you scroll all the way down, it lists every single class you need to take. If it's green, you're good, you don't have to worry about it for your graduation requirement. If it's red, it still needs work. So this student has done nothing for their degree, which is fine because it's our dummy account and if our dummy account was taking classes, I'd be concerned. Okay, so D2L. Is everyone here fairly comfortable with D2L or did you have questions? Do you still have questions? Hands, you're comfortable? Hands, you have a question? Hands, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Okay, we're going to go into my D2L account really quick just to highlight some things in here that you might not have known you had. I apologize, it's the faculty account. Now that I'm no longer a student, I can't seem to convince them to give me a student account to show you guys what it looks like. But faculty accounts look almost the same. The number one thing you should know is there's an announcements page, and that's where you can find general information about the school, things that are coming up, events, ideas. I'm not sure how any of you guys found out about Student Success Day, but I do believe it was listed in here somewhere at one point. Yes, Patrick? No, Patrick? I, I, I don't know. I don't go into D12 very much. <laughs> it was listed. So, thank you. I know we send a lot of emails and it's really easy to just click and pass them, but there's good information. Try and make a habit of going into D12 once a day. Kind of personal question, no one needs to raise their hand. How many of you guys were dropped from a class a couple weeks ago with a failure no-show, an FN grade? 
that grade you got because you weren't putting in an online presence in D2L. It's really easy with an online class or a hybrid class to say, I'll check next week, I'll check next week. The whole purpose of that failure no-show is to remind you guys, we do it right away after a week or so, and it's just, hey, you're a student, make sure you're checking your classes. I'll admit it, I've been an online student, I waited to the last two weeks to do a class. Don't do that. Don't, really, don't do that. That was the worst two weeks of my life, doing an entire class in two weeks. Don't. Check your D2L once a day. If you scroll up to the top, very top bar, you'll see red dots that pop up. Patrick, way up by my name. Up here? Uh, yeah, just a little to the left. Right there. Those are announcements. Anytime your faculty posts something in your class, you're going to be able to see it right there. You're able to select a course also up at that top banner. If you go a little ways to the left, there's a drop down. I know some students like to scroll all the way bottom down to their classes. This is just a quicker, easier way to find all of your classes. They're listed right there. When you have a D2L class or you have homework, your faculty expects you to use the Dropbox to turn in your homework, so don't email them. That's a number one topic. Students come to me and it's like, well, I turned in my homework and I got new credit. How'd you turn it in? I emailed them. Yeah, teachers don't check their email. Or they do, and they get like 200 emails a day. Don't, don't email your teacher that way. That's, that's just me. Okay, one cool thing that we have that probably no one ever takes time to look at is smart thinking. It's on the right side. It is an online tutorial program. So anytime you have a question, you can go in there and find an answer for a class. It's not Dakota County's tutoring, but it's an online tutoring system where they've compiled information from all the different classes and all the different schools. And you can find answers to just about any topic out there. So 2 a.m., you're working on your homework. It's due 8 a.m. the next day, and you know you're not getting a hold of a faculty to help, to get help. Smart thinking is there for you. I clicked on it, but nothing happened. So. Okay. Apparently, our link is broken. We will fix that for you guys. Sorry about that. It, it works. It works. Okay. I wonder if this is because it's a dummy account. It might Probably. Not. Probably because it's a dummy account, and we're we're using a fake student's account right now. Well, I'm using my account, which still is not a real account. So, I've shown you some things that you may have known or you may not have known. There is one final thing I want you all to take away with this. School is, you're, it's expected to be challenging, it's expected to be difficult. How many of you guys have seen a little kid learning how to walk? How many, like they fall like what, a couple hundred times a day, something like that, and they get back up. None of them think anything about it. How come we get to school, college, and all of a sudden we're like, oh, this is hard, I must be dumb. This is hard, something's wrong with me. No, it's learning, that's what it's there for. We all expect it to be hard. We all want you guys to learn. If it's not challenging, you're not learning. What we don't expect for you guys is to not try. So when you email a teacher or you email me and you have a question where it's saying, hey, I can't do this, that's not good enough. Or hey, I don't know this, that's not good enough. I want you guys to be specific. I know for the most part, before you email me, you've tried a few things and you've looked into it. But if I hear, hey, I don't know what my grades are. Hey, I don't know what class to take. Have you guys looked? What, what's your actual question? Really think about what your question is. I know you're all trying. But for us to be able to help you best, we want to see that. So instead of saying, hey, I don't know what my financial aid status is, email me and go, hey, I looked at my financial aid and it's saying this and I have no idea what that means. <coughs> that shows me that you cared, that shows me that you tried. That makes me more likely to help you. Not more likely to help you, that's a horrible way of explaining it. That makes me better able to help you because I can pinpoint exactly what you need. If it's a miscommunication, great, I can fix it. If it's simply you don't know where to go, great, I can tell you where to go. But when you say, I don't know, just blanket statement, there's not much I can do for you right in that one statement. So there's, there's my 15 minute public speak public service announcement. It's probably shorter than that because I never talk long. Any questions, comments, concerns? Okay. Give her a round of applause. Thank you, Natalie.